a one-step equation. Now that we know what equations are and what inverse options are, we can actually go in and we can solve equations. And I understand that for some of you, these are very easy equations. You can look at them, you know how to solve them. But I want to show you how you should approach each of these equations and how to show proper work. If you start off doing it correctly on the easy ones, it makes it that much easier for you to do the hard ones. It's the same process. And the way I like to solve equations is I always start by drawing a line right through the equal sign. That's the same thing you should do. Draw a line right through the equal sign all the way down. And the reason for that line is because I'm kind of a visual person. And what I like you guys to understand is that when you're solving equations, this line is there for a reason. Because what you do on one side of the line, you must do the exact same thing on the other side of the line. That line allows you to visualize it. It also helps to keep your work organized, nice and neat. If you can do that, that's how you found as well. So here we have x, positive 3, and a positive 7. Our goal in solving this is to get the variable alone by itself. We want to get this x right here alone by itself. So I need to get rid of this constant. This is a positive 3. What's the inverse of the opposite of a positive 3? Negative 3. Negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 3 from this side of the line. But what I do on one side, I must do on the other. other side. So I subtract 3 from this side. And then I draw another line, keeping my work nice, neat, and organized. And when you do this, when you go to the next level, you work from left to right. What I mean by left to right is this. Left to right. Nothing happened to the x, so I bring it down. What happens to these threes? They cancel out. Positive three and negative three, that equals zero, so the technically cancels out. So x, bring down the equal sign. Last but not least, seven minus three, we should all know what that is. Five, four. Four, four. x equals four. So we got x equals four. How do you know that's the correct answer? Anybody have an idea how you can check the same? Four plus three equals seven. Yep, you can substitute this back into the original equation to see if you get a true statement. Four plus three gives you seven. So you end up with seven equals seven. That's a true statement. If you get a true statement, it means that your solution is correct. So we have x plus three equals seven. We said that x equals four. So if we substitute in four here, four plus three equals seven. We add these together, seven equals seven. If you have the exact same thing on both sides, that's known as a true statement. You're actually going to hear that again at the end of module seven, true statements, and yes, there are false statements as well. This is a true statement, which means that this is a good solution, this is a good answer. If you get a false statement, something's wrong. Let's say that we got x equals nine, and I substitute a nine here. Well, what's nine plus three? Ten. What's nine plus three, guys? Twelve. Twelve. Nine plus three is twelve. Does twelve equal seven? No, that's what's known as a false statement. That means that you did something wrong, your solution is no good. So if you're ever wondering how you go back and how you check your work on these, you take your answer, you substitute it into the original equation. If you get a true statement, it's a good solution. If you get a false statement, probably wrong. Unless when you substitute it in, you substitute it in incorrectly. All right, so the first one's done. Let's go to the next one. The person that's gonna help me with the next one is gonna be Anthony. Anthony, so we're going to solve this. First step, we draw our line. We separate. Now, we have a negative 5, an x, and a negative 3. You want to get this alone. So what do I have to do here? We add 5. It's an inverse operation. It's always the opposite. The opposite of a negative 5 is a positive 5. So I add 5 here. Do I add it anywhere else? Yeah. I add it here. What I do on one side, I do on the other. And then you work from left to right. By working from left to right, you avoid common mistakes and errors. Trust me, this is the way you want to do it. Because this eventually turns into equations with variables on both sides. And there's exponents and there's fractions. But if you do it this way, it prevents you from making really simple mistakes. Which is usually what causes you to get the wrong answer when you're doing equations. So from left to right, what happens to the fives? They cancel out. We bring down the x. Bring it down. And x equals negative 3 and a positive 5. <coughs> you combine them. Think about it this way. You owe me 3 bucks. Your mom gives you 5. After you pay me back, what do you have? 2. two. You have $2 left. x equals 
2. How can you prove that's correct? You substitute it in here, negative 5 plus 2 gives me negative 3. It's a true statement. So x equals 2. Any questions on the second one? Any questions? Hey, don't you get to do what do, like 5 minus 3? No, because you did 5. What do you mean 5 minus 3? Like, like you see how it's like the plus 5 in blue? Uh -huh. Okay, well that's just like a, like a five. That yeah, it's the same way if you do it backwards. But yeah, you have to backwards. Know, are you gonna know how to do that every time? No. It's easier if you did one or two things. One, just learn how to add positive and negative in your head, which is what you're doing technically speaking, right? Yeah. Or, or you can also have the aid of your calculator. Either one of those is totally fine. Now, what if I had negative eleven minus fifteen? What would that be? That's why you have the aid of mechanical devices or your brain. Negative 11 minus 15 is negative 26. All right. Wait, like I'm still confused on like the adding stuff. I have to be confused. We'll go back to that. All right, next one. Negative 2x is equal to 10. Mr. Suarez, first step, draw the line. Here I have finally my first coefficient. I have negative 2 next to x. That's a coefficient. That's a variable term. What's happening between these two things is multiplication. So what, Mr. Suarez, is the inverse or the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. So to get rid of this coefficient and get the variable alone, I'm going to have to divide both sides. And I want to point this out so we avoid this mistake right now. You're not dividing both sides by negative 2x. You're not. You're dividing both sides by just the coefficient, which is what? Negative 2. Negative 2. I divide both sides by just negative 2, not negative 2x. I see that too many times. And people have all these crazy x's all over the place. No. You divide both sides by negative 2. What happens to both of these negative 2's, guys? Kids, ladies, they cancel out. You work from left to right. You bring down the x, you bring down the equal sign, and then you have to understand your division. Mr. Suarez, when we divide a positive and a negative, we make a just the person I'm speaking to, please, would make a negative. So it makes a negative. And 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. five. So this becomes negative 5. x is equal to negative 5. How do you know that's true? You substitute it back in here. Negative 2 times negative 5 gives me positive 10. It'll work every time. You must check your work. All right, Kevin. Last one here, buddy. So we're going to start this off. Five, drawing a line. And then I want to ask you a question. We're thinking about inverses. That's what we have to figure out, what inverse we're going to use. What is happening between the x and the 3? What operation is happening there? Division. So what's the opposite of the inverse of division? Multiplication. So we're going to have to multiply both sides of this equation by something. To do that, we start by wrapping this side in parentheses, wrap this side in parentheses. Do that. Wrap both sides in parentheses. The question then becomes, Kevin, what are you going to multiply both sides by to get rid of that division? What would you multiply both sides by? It's one of those numbers there. What do you think? Yeah, you multiply both sides by 3. So I multiply this side by 3. I multiply this side by 3. Once again, we work from left to right. What do you think is going to happen to both of these threes here, guys? Cancel. They're going to cancel, cancel. Only thing that's left on this side is what we wanted, my variable. X is over there. Equals, what's 5 times 3? 15. 15. X equals 15. How do you know if that's true? Substitute 15 back into here. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. It's a true statement. That's the good thing about solving equations. It's pretty impossible for you to get them wrong as long as you're substituting in and checking your work. If you do that, there's really little room for error because you've checked it. It's a true statement. My answer makes sense. And you move on to the next problem. Especially on tests or quizzes, I would always go back and check my work with equations because if you do that, it's pretty much you from getting simple things wrong. Questions on these first four? Four moving is the juicier stuff. All right. All right. Still, all of these are one-step equations. One step means it takes one move, or you only have to do one thing to solve it. But now we start adding in some exponents. We have x squared, x cubed. We have division again, but we have a fraction. And then here, this is a coefficient, but it's not a whole number. It's a fraction, which makes things a little different. We'll start up here, and we're going to go to 
Miss Castro, Miss Castro, we have x squared equals 49. I need to get rid of something from this side of the equation. What do I need to get rid of over here? The 2. The 2. I need to get rid of the exponent. So basically I'm saying x squared equals 49. What's the inverse of squaring something? Square rooting. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take the square root of this side, and I'm going to take the square root of this side. Remember, what you do on one side, you must do on the other side of the line. And then you draw your line, and let's see what happens here. When I take the square root of x squared, it removes that exponent. And instead of having x squared, what's going to be left over here? Just x. Bring down the equal sign. This is where either you need to remember your perfect squares or you need the aid of a calculator. What is the square root of 49? Seven. Seven. How do you know if this answer is good? What do you do? You substitute it back in. Seven squared, seven times seven gives me 49. That is a good answer. All right. Simple stuff, but you must, must, must oh. know these. Okay, yeah. All right, now on. Next one right here, buddy. X cubed equals 64. So I draw my line. I need to get rid of something over here. What do I have to get rid of over here? The three. I have to get rid of the exponent three. So this is X cubed. What's the opposite of cubing something? Or the inverse? Taking the cubic root. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the cubic root of this side. And this is how you take the cubic root. Looks similar, but on the outside of the radical sign, you're going to write the number 3. That's how you know it's a cubic root. Do the same thing over here. And then once again, you either have to know your perfect cubes or you have to use a calculator. Take the cubic root. Over here, what happens to these exponents? They cancel out. They cancel out. You're left with x equals... Anybody know the cubic root of 64? Four. Yes? Four. Sorry. Four. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Cubic root of 64 is 4. How do I know if that answer makes sense? I substitute it back in to the original equation. 4 times 4 times 4 gives me 64. All right. All right. Two left. If you get the basics of one step, two steps really aren't that much harder. And variables, uh, equations with variables on both sides really aren't that much harder. The basics start here and these rules follow all the way up. What's up? Wait, I have a question. How yes. do you find the cubic root? All right. On the calculator, here's what you do. Second zero. On your trusty TI-30XA calculator, find the cubic root. Type in 64. You hit second, you hit zero. That takes the cubic root. Wait, so second zero. Put in the number, 64, hit second, hit zero. If you want to take a square root, you hit second and, well actually, if you want to take a square root, something like this, you would just hit the little square root button right there. Square root button for cubic roots, put in the number, hit second, hit zero. TI-30XA, the only calculator used in this classroom. All right, it's advertising dollars from you. Anyway, all right, two left. Okay, so, Yes. So when I did the cubic root on the calculator, I did 64 second y x three. Nope. Oh, you can do that too. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Yeah, that's a longer way. You can do that. That's the way I originally taught you. Either way is fine. Second zero works as well. Okay. So now that we're here, similar to something we did back here. Kevin did this one. That's division. So is this. The only thing is I have a fraction over here. Doesn't really change anything. You're just multiplying a whole number in a fraction. So class, what's happening between the x and the 2? Division. Division. What's the opposite of that? Multiplication. So you're going to wrap both sides in parentheses. And please do this. There's a reason for this that you will see next lesson. Wrap them both in parentheses. There is a big reason you do this now. It makes the next lesson that much easier to get in this habit now. So we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 2 and 2. What happens to both of these 2's, class? Cancel they cancel out. out, leaving just an x. Over here, here is how you do this. Take the 2, multiply it by the numerator. What's 2 times 13? 26. 26. 
And then you would divide by three, but let me ask you a question. 26, can it be divided evenly by three, yes or no? No. So we end up with this, 26 over three. You cannot simplify that, so you simply leave it alone. It is totally okay to have a fraction as an answer. There's nothing wrong with that. If you can simplify it, simplify it. If you can't simplify it, leave it as a fraction. Doesn't matter if it's an improper fraction, leave it alone. Do not make it a mixed number. Do not make it a decimal. Leave it alone. Can you simplify it? Yes, then simplify it. Can you simplify it? No, leave it alone. What's up? And then the denominator stays the same. Denominator stays the same, and here's why it stays the same. Let's zoom out, let's see what happens. So we had 13 over three, technically being multiplied by two. If you want to see what really happens, here's what happens. We turn this into a fraction, it becomes two over one, one and you multiply straight across. 13 times two is 26, three times one is three. But with whole numbers, we don't really have to do that. We can just multiply, divide. Whatever way works best for you. This way maybe makes it more clear. And this way, we'll come back into play later on in this lesson. What's up? Are you saying getting, getting used to put the sentence because of the equation, the fraction is just multiplying? Multiplying and plus next lesson, we'll be doing distribution. And with distribution, you know that there's a whole lot of parentheses all over the place. All right, last one here always takes a little time because I have to totally go back and rework fractions with you. All right, very last one here. We have two thirds X is equal to six. First thing, you do not turn that into a decimal. That would be 0.6 repeating, wouldn't help you. What you need to do is you need to try to think back and try to realize that, okay, if this is multiplication, right? Two thirds times X, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So let's zoom out here. That means that I technically have to go in and I have to divide, just pay attention, don't write this right now, just pay attention. I technically have to go in and divide both sides of this equation by two thirds. And some of you are looking like, uh, what? That's two, what? That's like a fraction on top of a fraction. That's, that's like a big fraction right there. How do I do that? Here is how you do it. So we have two thirds, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna zoom in just on this side. Two thirds, two thirds being divided by two thirds. Does anybody remember how to do this? Anybody remember how to divide fractions? Yeah, you don't you do? do like a reciprocal. You do the reciprocal. There's two ways to remember it. The proper mathematical way is to multiply by the reciprocal. The way you were probably taught and remember is something called keep. Change flip. Change flip. Those little Thank things you. are in there. I love so what that. you do is you keep the first fraction. You change the sign to multiplication. multiplication, and then you take this and you flip it. flip it, which is basically a longer way of saying multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal simply means to flip the fraction. When you do that, two times three gives me six. Six, three times two gives me six. Six divided by six is one, which basically means that on this side right here, this whole thing cancels down to 1x, and 1x is the same as writing just plain old x by itself. So on this side, cancel, cancel. Now, we have 6 divided by 2 thirds. Well, it's the same process. So we have 6 divided by 2 thirds. You're like, wait, 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 Mr. Wilson. We know how to divide fractions, but that's not a fraction, isn't it? Put it over 1. Same process. Keep change flip six times three is 18 one times two is two 18 divided by two is nine 18 divided by two is nine so what we really ended up with here is this x is equal to nine and i'm going to go back in and i'm going to put the work in for you on the main slide x equals nine so here's what we do we're basically basically when you see this, a fraction as a coefficient, you're just going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Three over two, three over two. We know that these two fractions here will do what? Basically cancel, they'll become a one. One X is the same as just writing X. Boom, boom. On this side, 
3 times 6 is? 3 times 18. 18 nine. divided by 2 is? <coughs> nine. 9. And your answer is x equals 9. That's always the most difficult one-step equation for people to master. Just keep in mind, when you see a coefficient and it's a fraction, you're going to flip it and multiply both sides by that fraction. So 2 thirds x was my coefficient. I flipped it. I multiplied both sides by 3 over 2. It will always cancel out the other fraction on one side, and you'll just do the multiplication on the opposite side. Any questions on one step? If you understand this well, two steps really ain't a big deal. Wait, I'm confused. Eleven. Okay, on what? Let's try another one. Let's just make sure that we all are on the same page. Let's say I have two fifths x is equal to ten. So my coefficient is a fraction. So which means I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 2 over 5? So I multiply this side by 5 over 2. I multiply this side by 5 over 2. No, because it's already it's already like multiplying. These cancel. It, it's, it's a fraction, so it's the Okay, just go These cancel, and you get x is equal to, what's 5 times 10? In case you want to see this the long way, look, 10 over 1 times 5 over 2. What's 10 times 5? 50. 50. 50. 1 two. times 2 is 2. 50 divided by 2 gives 25. me 20. Why don't we just do that way? Wait, but like, it's the exact same thing that I'm doing here. The only difference is I just put this over 1. It's the exact yeah. same so like, thing. It's the exact same thing. So like, it will it's always, exactly the, the first part, like the fraction will always end up crossing out. And then, like... On the other side, you just... On the other side, you just... You just multiply and then divide. Yeah. Simple, right? It's like you, you do 10 times 5 and 5 divided. The good thing is you have the opportunity in a second to try it. So we'll see. All right? This is going to be one just like that. Any questions on this? No. Any questions? All right.